If you step out the front door here in Pierce Street, walk up around the corner to Hollis Street Maternity Hospital, and if you know the great book of Dublin, Ulysses, the book that inscribed so many of the streets of this city with so much, you'll know that that's where Joyce sets the Oxen of the Sun episode. It's an episode in Ulysses, and of course Ulysses is, is you know, all the chapters have a kind of thematic unity to them. It's the episode in Ulysses where a group of people are basically sitting around talking, but Joyce doesn't just let it be that. He uses the idea of maternity hospital, of something growing embryonically, to do a whole history of language. So the chapter starts out as a sort of pastiche, and then the pastiche evolves and becomes a 15th century, 16th century, 17th century language. You get pastiches of 19th century novels. And then finally, the chapter ends with a pastiche of his own language, of the language of the early part of the 20th century in Dublin. It's literally a whole sort of sedimentary history of the English language embedded in a particular place five minutes around the corner from where we're sitting right now. That's in some ways what it means to live in a city of literature. That sense that every step of the pavement, every building has at some level been written about, has this kind of literary heritage, has this depth through time. It's more than just the city of the pubs like McDade's where Brendan Behan and Patrick Kavanagh talked and wrote. It's more than all of that. It's about being a living city of literature. And I can think of no better embodiment of that than this Dublin Literary Award. The councillor mentioned the 119 libraries around the world that nominated books that are on the long list that we're launching here today. If you want to imagine a kind of network of readers, and I try to imagine this spatially, visually, a web spreading out all around the world to include not just the libraries here, not just Pier Street, but libraries in, in Finland, libraries in Canada, libraries in Malaysia, libraries in New Zealand, libraries in Australia, libraries all around the world. We are part of that network. And that's how we become a living, a globalized city of literature not just a sort of heritage city of literature. Literature is going to be one of the things that helps us navigate this moment that we're in between the historic, the heritage, and the spatial, the globalized. We're lucky we have some good guides. <laughs> I've been ensconced in a hotel for the, a weekend with these five. We have a very, very strong judging panel this year, and I just want to take the opportunity to introduce them to you. This is Zoe Strachan from Glasgow. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> this is Kathy Rensenbrink um, from Cornwall. <laughs> Yannick Garcia from Barcelona. <laughs> Srila Ghosh. And this man may be familiar to some of you, Niall McMonagall, from this parish. We've got 157, 157 books that we're working our way through looking at. And there's something quite humbling about that because, in a sense, every one of those 157 books that's on that long list is a winner, in a sense. They have all gone through a process. Somebody in a library somewhere said, this is the book that our readers like. So each one of those books, in a sense, has already won, in the sense that it has made its way onto this long list and has something to be proud of. Our task, their task, <laughs> is to make our way through those 157, 156, and to find the one that in June will stand out there. If you go over the past winners, you see that this, this prize is a remarkable one. I mean, you think of, I think of last year's winner, Emily Rustovich, who was a first-time writer. You know, this, that was her first novel. And, and the novel was Idaho, set in the American Midwest, nominated by a library in Belgium. Now, there is something remarkable that doesn't happen with a literary prize anywhere else. And you go back through the winners over the years. If you took the, all the winners, th these are books that have stood the test of time. So there's a lot of reading ahead. 
Um, I think we know what Christmas is going to be like for these people. <laughs> it's going to be involved about reading. But reading is a pleasure. Reading is a joy. One other thing I'd just like to say, and that is to praise just the professionalism of the Dublin City Library staff. 157 books from all around the world, from all those publishers, arrive miraculously in our respective homes in boxes. They arrive in the rooms where we're working. They're going to be here in the library system for people to read. When the shortlist appears, they'll be available. So all of that happens sort of magically, and it's kind of like elves do it. But it's not elves, it's librarians. So I just like to praise the librarians as well for the work they're doing in the system, what they're doing here in the system. So the very last thing I'll say is, there's some great books on this long list. All of you, get out there and read. That's your homework. Thank you. Yeah.